So recently, the Kingdom Hearts games were released on PlayStation Plus, which honestly makes me incredibly happy, since several more people can now try out my favorite series if they so choose to. And some time ago, a friend of mine said he wants to give the games a try on stream. So I had a little idea pop into my head. Why not make a video because I might not be able to make it to the stream to give him some early game tips. After all, he was asking for some help. So then I thought to myself, well, this could also help a lot of other people. So I decided I wanted to turn this into a series on my channel. Now, before we begin, I want to state I won't be going over everything in the game itself. That would make the video way longer than it needs to be and I'm not going to waste your time. There may be later vids in the future for something like that, but for now I want to focus solely on the beginning of the game, meaning I'll only be talking about the tutorial section and the Destiny Islands level. With that out of the way, remember to like and sub if you enjoy this content. With that shameless plug out of the way, let's get started. So we're going to start this list off with the very first thing you actually do in the first ever Kingdom Hearts. And that's the choice you make at the area known as the Station of Awakening. When you first ever arrive at this area, you are presented with the option of choosing from three different weapons. A sword, a shield, and a Mickey Mouse toy that they call a staff. The game has you choose one, as I stated before. And at first glance, this kind of seems like a simple just choose your weapon tutorial that you're just picking something to get through here. But there's actually something else going on here. You see, you're actually picking what your ability focus will be. If you pick the sword, the abilities you learn become more attack focused. Shield is defensive and survival focused, and the staff is magic focused. Afterwards, you choose what to give up, which picks what will be essentially your weakest attributes. For example, picking the sword and dropping the shield would give you a strong attack build, but you would have a much weaker focus on defense. It's good to know this starting out, so you can choose your optimal playstyle. I personally always chose Sword due to me mostly relying on just wailing on my enemies with my weapon, but it's up to you what you want to build throughout the game. With that one out, let's go on to the next. Alright, for number 4, we're also going to be staying with the Station of Awakening for it. Now, once you get a bit further into this level, and get past a bit of the tutorial stuff it gives you, you enter an all new area that is part of the patio section of the first area of the game called the Destiny Islands. Waiting there for you are three characters Final Fantasy fans will certainly be happy to see, and they will each ask you a question which you can choose to answer in three different ways. But before you choose, there's something you should know. Picking questions a certain way can actually affect your character as a whole in three different ways. If you decide to answer all three questions with the top answers for each one, you will gain faster experience points until level 50. Choose all of the bottom three answers and you get less experience until level 50. Nothing happens, your experience growth will stay the exact same throughout the entire game. Now after hearing this, you're probably thinking to yourself that choosing the early experience growth is the best option, right? Well, about that. You see, if you do decide to choose all three first answers, you will get that early boost. However, every level past 50 will now take longer to get, so late game leveling will become more of a challenge. On the other side though, if you pick the bottom three answers, leveling up the start is a bit of a chore, sure, but late game leveling is a lot easier. This one is more or less up to you. Would you like an early game boost with a late game challenge, or would you like an early game challenge with a late game boost? I personally think the first option is best, but that's just me. So what we're talking about next in our list is actually a mechanic that has only appeared in the original Kingdom Hearts games, and not a single one afterwards, and that is the tech point system. Tech points are basically a special version of experience points, but instead of gaining them through defeating enemies like you would normal experience points, tech points are gained through completing special conditions. Examples range from using magic on a heartless with a weakness to its said elements, or something as simple as just stopping an attack combo. And at the start of the game, you can actually exploit this to your advantage. You see, at the start of Destiny Island, you get the chance to fight either Titus, Waka, Selfie, or Riku, each with their own level of difficulty. However, the one you want to fight is Waka. The reason being is his ball throwing attack. It's actually pretty easy to knock back. 
And if you ever hit him with his ball, you get a tech point each time it connects. And sending back his special super throw that he has will net you two tech points instead. And while you're hearing this, you're probably thinking that one or two tech points isn't really a lot. But when you're just starting out and need like barely any experience to level up at all, it is a good way to get some easy level ups to start out the game. Next up on our list is something a little less combat focused in comparison to everything else on here. And that is the race with Riku over who gets to name the ship and share a Paupu fruit with Kairi. Now, the race is a fairly simple one, just make it to the star sign and back before Riku does. But the race can be also a challenge, considering it's your first playthrough and you probably don't know the layout of the area, alongside the AI is actually pretty good at the race. Well, here's the tip for winning this race. Just don't do the fucking course at all. I'm not joking, just, just hear me out before you leave. Ignore everything in the race that it wants you to do, from the jumping to the zip lines, just ignore all that. Just run in a straight line towards the star sign and go back. This will win you the race incredibly easily as you don't have to deal with the parts of the racetracks that can screw you over rather than help. And your AI will always follow a set course. The enemy will always follow a course and he cannot leave. He is trapped in an eternal torment of actually playing fair while you can cheat to your advantage to screw over this fucking long haired hippie. Sorry, I, uh, I stay up pretty late making these videos. Anyways. You can do this over and over again and the AI will never be the wiser. Why should you do this over and over again, you ask? Well, every time you beat Riku, you get what's called a pretty stone. An item that may seem worthless now, but when you get to the first ever real area known as Traverse Town, you can sell these for some pretty good money. The original game gave you a piss poor amount, but the final mixed version on PlayStation Plus gives you essentially a hundred bucks from it, or basically a dollar in this game. So, if you beat him a few times, you can save up money to start the game out with some extra potions, an ether, a tent, or even a new weapon for Donald and Goofy when they join your party. But, before we move on to one, I also wanted to add that you can find an item called a protect chain in this area, in a cave on the wall. Equipping it will give you a small defense boost, which will be very helpful early game. Okay, little warning I need to give for this one. Everything before now has been something that can be done with little to no challenge for the player. This one's going to be a little different as this will take a bit more effort than the others do. During your time on Destiny Islands, you can get two different chances for what I call the potion farming trick. For the first day, you can fight Riku for it, as every time you beat him, you win a potion for it. And on day two, you can fight Titus, Waka, and Selfie in a three-on-one match for a potion as well. Although, it's only choosable after beating each of them in a one-on-one -on -one fight before talking to Titus to unlock the option of a three-on-one. And, if I'm being honest, both of these battles can be quite a challenge for various reasons. Riku's battle is a straight-up 1v1, but he deals a lot more damage, has far more health, and you fight him in a really small area that if you get knocked off of, you lose instantly, which can be pretty damn annoying. With the 3v1, none of the characters are as strong or have that much health in comparison to Riku. There's also no worry of falling off the edge since your fight is on the beach, but you are fighting three characters all at once, and they aren't designed to have some sort of pattern they all follow. They're all just attacking you like it's a three-player game of TMNT Shredder's Revenge and you're fighting one character. You're just fighting all three with only your knowledge of the 1v1 to help you. And it's not like the camera and lock-on system really help you in this fight. It is entirely up to you on how you want to approach this. If you can approach it and conquer it, you can essentially get dozens of potions and even some extra experience early game. But from my opinion, I personally believe that the 3v1 is easier due to no limits on the arena. Funnily enough, I even made a poll of this on my Twitter and asked what some people thought of this fight. And I was surprised to see not a lot of people agreed with me, believing the 3v1 was way harder. I'm curious what you all will think when you play the game. Hope you'll tell me in the comments. And that is the end of that. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope anyone who wants to finally play this series gets some helpful tips from this video. Also, again, don't forget to like and sub for more. Have a lovely day, everyone, and see you next time.